Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. This video is going to be about disaster recovery. When I use the phrasing disaster recovery, I'm not talking about a disaster in terms of something that happens in servers or in IT management or in systems administration where you know your servers crash for a business and you need to bring everything back up. I'm talking about when something goes disastrously wrong in your life. There are two things that have always helped me. One is a little bit simpler than the other, and they are both easier said than done. I've had to go through them in the past, and I will have to go through them in the future. There's something I brought up on this channel at the end of the summer last year that is likely not going to stop kicking my ass until the end of this year or the middle of next year. So one of the reasons I made this channel back in 2012 is because it helped me to talk through certain issues with the camera. It also helped me to plot through what I'm going to do and help me plan my own life. And above all, not forget my own advice. It's very easy to lie to yourself. It's very easy to forget some of your own thoughts, morals, ethics, everything else. And, uh, you know, kind of talking into a camera has always helped keep me honest. So there's two things that have always helped me when I've run into something that's an absolute disaster. The first is instead of going, oh my God, I need to find my license. Oh my God, I need to find my license. Oh my God, what if I don't have my license? Where's my license? Is stopping for a moment. Let's say I need my license for a trip or I need my passport for a trip. I say, if I find my license, I will make my road trip. If I do not find my license, I will find something else to do for the next two weeks until the DMV sends me a copy of it or until I get sent my a new copy of my passport. So if my trip was for business, then I could say, okay, what else could I do for my business during the two weeks that I'm stuck here? Rather than, I need to find it, I need to find it. What am I? Here's what it does. If you're in that state of mind where, oh my God, I need to find it, oh my God, I need to find it, you're gonna be stressed, and when you're stressed, you're not actually gonna find it. Once you say, if I find my license, I take my trip. If I don't find my license, then here's what I'll do. It allows you to accept it, you calm down, and then you're actually able to find your license because you remember where it was because your mind is not in a state of frenzy and panic. That's the first one. The second thing that I've always found is helpful when I actually find myself in a disastrous situation is slowly coming up with a plan for how I'm going to dig myself out of it and then beginning to work on that plan, even if it's a plan that is not necessarily something that is actually going to work. And I'll give an example of that. So when something really horrible happens to me, when I lose an insane amount of money or something that happens to me that I just find to be particularly unfair or some, you know, I ruin a business, I ruin a relationship, whatever else, what, what tends to happen to a lot of people and what admittedly happens to me is I look in the mirror and I say, you failure, you fuck up, you screw up, you loser, I can't believe you did this. If only I did this differently. Why didn't I do this differently? What kind of idiot wouldn't do it this way? Isn't it so odd? Imagine how much better things would have been if you had just seen this or done that. And I think that's a natural response for a lot of people. Now, there are gonna be friends that say, oh, don't beat yourself up. Admittedly, that doesn't really work. That, that doesn't really do anything. Like, I don't think your average person that's beating, is going, oh, thank you for telling me that. I'm gonna be happy and live out my life now. That's not usually how that works. Or what's gonna happen is you are, you're gonna, you're gonna think about all the things that you could have done differently, and you may just sit down in a chair and be fairly depressed and go, I give up. Now, that, that's a natural way to feel. And here's the thing, when you're beating yourself up and saying, you idiot, you moron, this, that, or the other, I'm not gonna tell you that all that stuff's not true. That stuff may very well be true. I don't know your situation. Maybe what you did is actually really dumb. Maybe you deserve to beat yourself up. Maybe you deserve to look in the mirror and say, you fucking loser, you idiot. You deserve everything that happened to you. However, here's the thing. That's not actually gonna make you feel any better and feeling better is gonna be what's necessary to get yourself out of the disastrous situation. What I find helps me is coming up with a program with very, very simple steps as focusing on what it is I can control, not what I can't control, and then focusing on working that program in order to try and dig myself out of my hole. This does two things. The first thing it does is it may actually help me dig myself out of my hole. The second is, even if it does not have any chance of helping me dig myself out of my hole, because my hole is so effing deep, there's no way I'm ever getting out of it, it allows me to at least get a little release of dopamine because I am working a plan. And when I get that release of dopamine, I will feel better, which will open me up to new opportunities. So even if I am in a gigantic hole and there's no way I'll ever climb myself out, maybe because I'll actually be able to see, I don't know, there's a crane over there or there's some dude over there that I could yell at to help me, toss me a rope and get me out of here. I'll give a particular example with my old supply company that failed about 11 years ago. So 12 years ago, I started Rossman Supply Group. The idea was that I was gonna sell LCDs that were not being sold in a good manner by other vendors. Most of the vendors selling people that fix MacBook screens were not familiar with compatibility 
So they would list PC screens that were not compatible with MacBooks and they would sell them. Or they would have screens with three or five dead pixels and they'd sell all sorts of garbage that wasn't compatible. They would sell A1150 screens as A1226 screens because both MacBooks looked the same and they didn't know any better. So I said, I'm gonna sell screens in a manner where what you get is actually what you need for your machine because I have every single one of these model numbers memorized. I am actually using these screens from my own repair business. So what I sell you has to work. It cannot have stuck pixels because it is not worth it to me when I'm making 100 or $200 in profit a job to get screwed over because I saved $2 on buying a grade A minus screen rather than a grade A screen. So I started the business on that idea. There are many reasons that that business failed. I started trying to sell way too many items at lower profit margins because a partner in the business was unhappy with the speed of growth and I was intimidated by somebody that I shouldn't have been intimidated of at that time because of their business experience and also because I made a lot of bad decisions out of my own greed. Above all was some of the mismanagement that was completely my fault. So I had hired a firm to patch and upgrade my website because I did not trust myself to do it. I wanted to pay somebody else to do it properly. I find somebody to do it. They update the site in a manner where instead of authorizing and capturing payments, as I discussed in this old video, it is now only authorizing payments. So in a very, very short period of time, about thirty to $40,000 in sales was just gone because it took their money and then it gave them their money back just a few days later and the business was high enough sales volume at the time and I was so busy because I was trying to expand so quickly that I didn't even notice it until that money was gone. In a, pro in a business that has very low profit margins, losing $30,000 in a very short period of time is enough to sink you, particularly when I was in my early 20s. You know, at this point in time, I, I, I'm not trying to brag, but as a 33-year-old, losing $30,000 is a <laughs> but whatever, you know, sucks. I'll be mad. I'll be very, very mad, but I'll get on my life. At that point in time, losing $30,000 was, I'm going to down a bottle of alcohol and forget I exist. Like that was, th that was the end for me. So I sat in my chair for about three or four hours that night. I, you know, I gave myself a whole pity party. It felt like shit. There was nothing, you know, no, nothing anybody could do that would convince me otherwise that I wasn't completely screwed. That company already had other reasons to be screwed. It was already on its way out. That was the nail in the coffin for it. So what I did around four or five in the morning was I created a small plan for myself, a little step-by-step -step plan on how I was gonna try and dig myself out of the hole. What I did, I created a spreadsheet. I went over every single customer that had gotten a refund, their order number, their name, their email, their phone number, their address, uh, what it is they bought. I put in this little canned response thing that took all the other information and made a canned response email out of it and also would be, create a letter with proper formatting out of it in that spreadsheet that I could print out and mail to them in addition to emailing and phone, calling them and a little slot that would say how they responded to a phone call, an email, and a letter politely saying, hey, you got some for free. Would you like to pay for it? Now, that was not going to fix the problem with the company because even if I had gotten all of that thirty to $40,000 back, even if I had recovered 100% of it, I was still kind of screwed. However, as I started to work that plan, what I noticed is that I felt less depressed, I felt less hopeless, I felt less like downing a bottle of alcohol and forgetting I exist because I was working a plan. As I worked that plan, as I worked on those steps, I felt that little kick of dopamine that you get when the fan spins on a MacBook after you fix the board. I felt that little bit of happiness that comes when you're actually pursuing something. And what that did is that allowed me to actually find somebody in my building that worked collections for Capital One. I had no luck whatsoever at getting back any, I think I had made back like 80 bucks. This guy for, I think I like, I wound up sharing like thousand or seventeen hundred dollars with him. Uh, he wound up collecting back about twenty thousand of the thirty or forty thousand dollars within a few days, which I found particularly amazing because this is what he does in his work in, for work all day long. And he was just friends with one of the other people that used the studio that I was running at the time. So he just thought, you know, this is kind of cool. I get to work with my friends for a week and a half, get to make a little money on the side. And he helped me out with that entire process. But above all, what it did is since I was now out of that state of sadness, misery, depression, and everything from my business failing, even though that business was still failing. Because I had followed my routine, got my little kick of dope, and was happy again, I was able to focus on my repair company, which I had not been focusing on because I was so depressed about the failure of my supply company. And what happened, this was around November of 2011, I found the space at 186 First Avenue that was gonna become my store. And in December 2011, I also came up with a plan on how I was gonna rent it. Now my other company just lost all this money. 
and my repair company was never particularly amazingly successful. So how am I going to rent this place? I mean, I need to I need to renovate it. It doesn't even have a working door or a gate. Uh, you know, I, I need to pay first, last deposit. What am I going to do? Since I was in that state, I came up with an idea that I had not come up with for the previous three to six months where I was depressed over that failing business. This was literally days after I came up with this particular routine and this idea of dealing with uh, with being depressed over a disaster, which is that I was going to offer board repair services on eBay at what was below most of what other people were charging at the time. This wouldn't work now because when you go on eBay, there's people willing to do motherboard repair for like 10 or 20 bucks. It makes me sad. But back then, 199 was the floor back in 2000. That was the floor for a component level board repair on eBay. So I put up an ad for something stupid. I figured it was like 100 or 120 or 130 dollars, something really low, where I was going to be making no money whatsoever because I was still outsourcing board repair at the time. But there was a caveat. It said your repair will be done in something like 12 to 24 weeks, some, something ridiculous like that. I forget exactly what it was, but the upside is it will be cheaper. So if you're willing to wait, you can get it. Now, eBay and PayPal do not release your money unless you uh, send the customer the product. And I was dealing with a service that was going to take a long period of time to do because I was going to be focusing on all the other customer repairs that were coming in that I needed to pay the rent. And uh, so, so what did I do? Well, I wound up coming up with a brochure and a postcard that I could send out that detailed why we were the best of the service we offered and you know what it is we were going to be doing, have my personal phone number on it if anybody had any issues. And I mailed out those postcards, first class mail, which is tracked, at which point PayPal and eBay had released all the money. We, had, we did get every single one of those boards fixed or the customer got their full money back. That money went towards the first, last, and deposit to pay for that store, which at that point in time, I did not have. I was able to open that new store. Opening that new store allowed me to be right near all the NYU dorms, right near all the other college dorms, which are right next to a bunch of bars in the East Village where everybody gets drunk and then spills liquor on their computers, which provided me with a large sample size of MacBooks with which to learn from to become good at board repair, which allowed me to post board repairs on YouTube, which allowed me to front page Reddit, which allowed me to make the news, which allowed that business to grow and get me to where I am now, which allowed me to hire people like Steve and Chris and Paul, all these people that I would have never met if I sat in that chair and, and continued to simply be a one person business working out of either my apartment or a basement or a shared office. And all of that was something that I was able to accomplish and get to and do because I was able to get myself out of that hole by having a little set of procedures and just working it and following it. That gave me the kick of dopamine that I needed to come up with some ideas that allowed me to get out of my situation. That supply company failed. That supply company is a massive cratering hole of debt and misery and garbage that is in the past that I disbanded over a decade ago. I never got myself out of that particular hole. However, working the process to get my way out of that hole by coming up with a plan, focusing on what can I control. I can try to come up with a little procedure, a little spreadsheet. I can work my spreadsheet to recover as much debt from as many of these people as possible. And then when that's done, okay, well, I still don't have the, all the money and I still don't have the money that I would have wanted to have from if I did not make the stupid business decisions. Now, okay, let me work a plan. What could I possibly do with all the tools around me, with what I know how to do with my suppliers, with my eBay account? And what can I possibly do to be able to get this particular store that I want to get so that I become a quote, real business? And I, I worked my plan. I figured it out slowly, surely, step by step. And here's the thing. As I was working that plan, as I was focusing on what I could control rather than what I couldn't control, as I focused on even if this plan is not going to work, I don't even care. I'm just going to follow it so that I get a kick of dopamine so I'm not miserably depressed at my failure and sitting in a chair. Good things started to happen. Good things that I would have never anticipated happening. I did not know that I was going to do this ridiculous system so that I could rent my first store when I got out of the chair and decided to start typing up my little spreadsheet. But here's the thing, it actually worked for me. and it got me out of that particular hole that I was in with my repair business. And even though my supply company miserably failed, I'm in a much better place now than I was back then. And I do believe I'm in a better place now than I would have been had I just simply sat in the chair and continued to listen to myself. And here's the thing, it's been 11 years since I made that mistake. And I still look in the mirror from time to time and say, you're an idiot. Here are the very, very simple things that you could have done to avoid that situation. But I no longer care, even though I was an idiot back then, and even though I deserved a lot of that negative self-talk that I gave myself for the many stupid decisions I made with that company, I no longer care. Because in 2022, I am massively more successful than I was in winter of 2011 while I was failing. So 
telling somebody to simply don't say something bad about yourself or don't curse yourself out in the mirror or don't do this, that, or the other, that's not going to help because they want to do that because frankly, a lot of the times they may deserve it. What I find is actually helpful is focusing on what you can control. Yes, you may be an idiot. You may be a dumbass. You may be impatient. You may have done something massively stupid and you may deserve all of the criticism that you are giving yourself for being massively stupid. I'm not going to take that away from you because there's a very good chance that it's actually true. But what you can do is focus on what you can control. Come up with a little list, come up with a little procedure, come up with a little plan and start working that plan. And you may still think you are an idiot. You may still think that you are undeserving. You may still think that you did something horribly wrong, that you are a dumbass, but you're not going to care anymore because you're going to be a happy idiot. You're going to be a happy a dumbass because you're pursuing something. There's this book I read recently. It was a very, I forget the name of it. It's a very interesting book. It was talking about how when a man is pursuing a woman that they're interested in, the dopamine level actually goes up and they actually wind up becoming happier as they are pursuing the woman that they are interested in. Like whether, you know, coming up with a conversation or pursuing them for a date or whatever, they actually wind up becoming happier as a result of their dopamine going up when they do that, whether it's a human or whether it is another form of animal. And I really do believe that when you are pursuing a plan that you have put together, that it does release that little bit of dopamine that is actually going to make you happier, that is going to help you get out of your disaster, even if you don't think you can. Something happened last summer that I'm still dealing with today, that it's one of those things where I look at it and it looks like a ditch. It looks like a ditch that's just going to swallow me whole because the amount of money that I could potentially lose from that particular thing, it's over double that's what's, what's actually in my bank account. And that's something that's somewhat worrisome. And I actually started to find myself sitting back down in a chair, looking in a mirror and saying all the same shit that I remember saying 11 years ago. Doesn't seem fair. Doesn't seem right. But it is what it is. And one of the things that, and honestly, it's caused me to just stop focusing as much on my work. I haven't posted to YouTube as much as I used to. Um, I haven't been happy as much as I used to be. And one of the things that I decided to do is I started, to, I started putting together a plan, regardless of how horribly this plan may work. I had numerous different ideas. Here are the things that I can control. Here are the things that I'm actually able to do. Here's what I can do to try and improve my standing in this particular, uh, in this particular area. Here's something I can, here's a, I don't know, like break glass if, um, you know, break glass in case of emergency plan. That's kind of crazy, but something that I may be able to do. And here's what I found. As I was actually working my way through these things, my stress went away. Even though I'm not in a better position now than I was before, I feel happier. I feel less stress. I feel freer. And that feeling has actually allowed me to then engage with this problem in a new way that I wasn't engaging before that makes me feel like I actually do have the ability to defeat it because I can see things that I couldn't see before. I know that probably sounds crazy, and maybe it is crazy, but it's worked for me. And since it's worked for me, maybe it'll work for you. So I thought it would be worth sharing. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.